This video contains spoilers for Undertale and Deltarun. Please play the games before watching this. Deltarun is a game that has many, many unanswered questions. I mean, of course it does. We've only gotten two chapters so far, out of presumably seven. There are tons of questions to dig into, but what has vexed me for quite a while now is... What exactly is the bullet board in Deltarune? Like, genuinely, this thing confuses the heck out of me. The one in Undertale is confusing too, but less so. In this video, I'm going to be looking into what exactly is so weird about it, and throwing out a few possibilities of what it could be, as well as my own conclusion. So without further ado, let's get into what's up with the bullet board. To start off with, the bullet board, which I may also refer to as the battle box, is a box that appears during battles in both Undertale and Deltarune. It's that funny box that appears at certain times in the middle of the screen. They're somewhat different in both games, and dubiously canon, at least in Undertale. In both games, it's where you dodge the enemy's bullets using the soul. Every enemy has their own individual bullet style to their character. It appears on enemy turns, and in Undertale, it turns into the narration box on the player's turn. In Deltarune, the box vanishes entirely on the player turn. Strange. In both games, the enemy can distort the dimensions of the box depending on the attack they use. Some enemies even move the location of the box during their attack. Jevil even makes it disappear entirely with the true and Neo Chaos attack. Spamped and Neo expands the box beyond the barrier of the screen, and then spawns a new one for his power of Neo attack. And if you think that's odd, you ain't seen nothing yet. For starters, it's hard to tell if it's even diegetic to either game. Diegetic means that it's part of the story, so, for example, the save system in Undertale is diegetic. It's a tangible part of the story, and a significant part of that. There's a few odd lines that make the bullet board sound diegetic, but there's a couple of lines that imply the opposite as well. Against the ambulances, Susie tells you to avoid getting hit, but the narration also specifies by the ambulances. In Undertale, the blue book in the library be mentions bullet pattern birthday cards and expressing yourself through magic, which means that bullets are a part of their society. Heck, it's wholly possible that the monsters in the underground, for the most part, weren't attacking you out of harmful intent at all and were instead just trying to show off their bullet patterns, though that's a conversation for another time. In the Susie and Lancer battle, Susie does attack using bullets, and Birdly does too in all his fights. Now, you could argue that in the one with Queen, she's directing him where to attack. However, there are two battles where he isn't being mind-controlled and he's still attacking the soul. In fact, in the alleyway fight, there's two very, very interesting pieces of evidence. First, Birdly has an attack where he blatantly targets the soul. Second, after sparing Birdly if he took damage in that battle, Noelle will say, He hit me in the face with a tornado which means she perceived the battle as directly happening to her. No middleman entity taking the hits for her in her stead. When Susie fights Lancer, the soul is summoned from Chris to dodge the bullets. In fact, in the livestream for the 6th anniversary of Undertale, Toby calls attention to the soul coming from the direction Chris is in, and subsequently calls out the fact the soul is being used. <laughs> so if you notice, the hearts come from the top right. Yeah, the heart's That's where Chris is. It's not a bug. A strange detail on its own, and only stranger still with the call out. It's kinda hard to talk about the bullet board without touching on the rest of the battle system, at least in Undertale's case, so I'll briefly touch on that too. There are a few characters who affect your UI as part of their attacks. Asgard destroys the mercy button, Sans refuses to end his turn, forcing the player to use the soul to drag the bullet board over to the fight button, some attacks can damage you when you're in the menu if they linger on screen, and Sans intentionally puts bullets in your menu to deal extra damage. Also, Azrael's final attack damages hell destroys your whole UI besides the save button. And then, and then there's the soul itself. To put it simply, soul lore is a little bit screwed. For starters, there's a whole debate over what the Red Soul trait is, another debate about whether the soul in Deltarune belongs to Chris or the player or whoever, and then of course, what exactly the soul even does. Flowey says it's your soul, the culmination of your being. Likely referring to Frisk, right? Because they're the only one visibly present and they don't show any signs of being possessed. But then, Ralsei has a very, very similar explanation to Flowey's, except he repeatedly directs these statements at Chris. Chris isn't the one in control, and Ralsei seems to know this, so why direct the tutorial at them? 
Does he assume the player already knows or something crazy like that? Okay, I'm getting way, way, way off track here, so let's touch on another funny little soul thing that keeps me up at night. Soul modes! Those are weird too, would you believe it? In Undertale, the different soul modes were caused by the enemy monster's magic. Even the yellow soul mode is magic. Elfie's built the phone in Metaton, so the transforming to yellow because of the phone resonating with Metaton's presence is still magic. However, in Deltarune, you can't argue that soul transforming is magic because A, humans can't use magic, and B, Spamton is surprised and excited by your big shot. If he gave us that ability, why would he be so surprised? I'd love to get into this more, but I think I've exceeded the overview I wanted to give in this video. So, I think at this point, it's time to end the tangents and return to the topic at hand. The real question. What is the bullet board? What is soul dodging? Is it diegetic? Is it just a fun Toby Fox game quirk to make the gameplay more exciting and it has no deeper meaning? I've come across several takes for Deltarune where it seems more complicated than Undertale, and I do think they're worth mentioning in this discussion. I won't be covering multiple takes about Undertale's system because I don't remember any. So, for Deltarune's bullet board, one take I've seen is that everyone can see the bullet board. The enemy darkeners attack using it, the enemy lighteners attack using it, and Chris, or more rather the soul, dodges their attacks. Pretty straightforward. Another take I've seen is that the bullet board is real, but only from the perspective of the player. We can see the board, no one else can. Something else I've seen is the idea that Toby just didn't think about the bullet board too much, so it's mostly just there as a unique gameplay aspect. The soul dodging is real, but the bullet board might just be an abstraction. The soul does come out of Crest to dodge, but it's not necessarily dodging any specific bullets, because those might not actually be real. And the light nurse can't see the soul either. I've also seen it suggested that only the dark nurse can see the bullet board, so most enemies can see it and make use of it, like an ambulance's attack where they make a small scene with it, or mouses where they put walls for mice bullets to come out of. But Susie, Noel, and Chris can't see the board, and to be honest, who knows what Ralsei is, so he might be able to see it, or he might not, and I'm getting off track again, so I should probably move on before I get on another tangent. So now, it's time to debunk all of these. These takes are decent, but none of them really work work. There's a few things just a little bit off with each of them, and that breaks down their plausibility. Granted, we don't have the full game, so it's likely we'll get better evidence in the future for or against these theories, but as of now, I think this current evidence is enough to make or break these ideas for me. So, the first idea was that everyone can see the bullet board. But then, why wouldn't Susie or Noelle comment on the soul? Sure, it's excusable that maybe they'd just take it for granted, but wouldn't Susie at least be confused as to why the soul damages her? Because it's coming from Chris. Distinctly coming from Chris, mind you, considering there's a particular animation for it. And Toby points out during Susie's fight against Lancer, the soul coming from the top left, where Chris is. Wouldn't she be confused as to why Chris's soul is giving her damage, and sometimes her alone damage? And... If you get hit during the second Birdly fight, Noelle says, He hit me in the face with a tornado. Instead of, If he would just listen to me. If you do the battle hitless. Which means that she perceived the attacks as something different from bullets, and something happening directly to her and not the soul. So, this interpretation doesn't really work. The second take was that the bullet board is real, but only for the player. However, Spamton comments on your big shot, which seems to be an ability confined to the soul, which is confined to the player. The bullet board has to be at least somewhat diegetic for this, which means this take isn't really valid. Also, any interpretation where the lightners are physically dodging attacks doesn't work, because there are two roller coaster fights and there just isn't room for them to dodge any sort of attack. They would just fall off. So this interpretation really doesn't work, because there would have to be some equivalent for the characters, because otherwise it would be odd. The next idea was that the soul dodging attacks is real, but the bullet board isn't, and the attacks aren't really bullets, which doesn't work at all if you consider the fact that multiple enemies mention the concept of bullets. Hell, Spamton has specific dialogue tailored to his unique attacks and bullets. So that's an invalid idea as well. Finally, the idea that doesn't work, but in my opinion works th the best so far, Dark Nurse can see the bullet board in the soul, but the Light Nurse can't. 
This works fairly decently until you consider the versus Susie and Lancer fight and all the fights against Birdly. Especially the fights against Birdly. Susie and Birdly would have to be getting extremely lucky to manage hitting the soul. You could say Lancer was helping direct Susie when they battle alongside each other, which could excuse this, but Birdly? Queen was ignoring him in the coaster fight, so she couldn't have been directing him, and in the alleyway fight, there were no dark nurse present until Birdly summoned allies, and Birdly has a targeted attack. You can't say that he's getting lucky, because he's blatantly aiming at the soul, but I do think this idea has some merit, and I do think it's on the right track. Personally, I think that in Deltarune, it functions something like how the mist works in Percy Jackson. In Percy Jackson, the mist hides all the supernatural mythological stuff from the eyes of most mortals, but the gods and demigods can still see it. I propose that the bullet board is visible as the bullet board to darkners who don't think twice about it. However, it warps the lightner's view of the battle. Susie and Noelle think they're the ones dodging attacks and being directly hit by them, and Birdly and Susie think they're the ones directly targeting the party. However, Dark World denizens see the battle for what it really is. A board and some bullets and a soul encompassing the whole party. In Undertale, the UI is affected too much to be explained like this. I think the UI pulls together the Undertale battle system into one package. Which means the bullet board is as much a part of the world as Asgore destroying the mercy button. If the UI is diegetic, then so is the bullet board especially because bullets are just a typical part of monster culture. It just makes sense to me that in a video game where the world recontextualizes a save function to be a tangible part, a significantly tangible part at that, of the plot, its dodging mechanics would be diegetic as well. So, I did it again. Came into this with some ideas about Deltarune, brought up Undertale to try and flesh it out a little, and suddenly I'm diving headfirst into both of them simultaneously. Tangents are just second nature to me now, I suppose, but it was interesting to dive into. I'd, I'd consider a deeper dive into the BS that is soul lore, but I think I'm gonna have to table that idea for a while. Probably a long while. Probably so long that I forget that I had the idea to do so, but might be interesting to cover if I remember. The topic of the bullet board has been discussed and disregarded simultaneously, and it's been something I've thought about a decent amount, clearly. But I do know there's many more takes than the few I covered in this video, so as always, feel free to leave your own ideas in the comments. Did I miss something? Do you have a cooler idea that I haven't considered yet? Let me know. I'll see you all later. Bye!